Hey, it's Dr. Amanda with Straight Smile Solutions, straightsmilesolutions.com, and today we're going to talk about posterior open bites in braces cases. So I have a ton of videos about posterior open bites in aligner cases. The etiology somewhat overlaps, but it's somewhat different. So if you're interested in the aligner ones or the Invisalign ones, um, you can go, as always, into my channel, Straight Smile Solutions, find that tiny itty bitty magnifying glass that's there within my channel and search up the keyword posterior open bite or just open bite. And you could, probably will see a lot of videos about dealing with those. I also have videos, um, a full length video stored at my archived webinar channel, which is letter G, letter P, so G as in, I don't know, goodness, Grover, and P as in Paul, gpwebinar.com, all one word, gpwebinar.com. And there's a posterior open bite um, archive video there on how to deal with them too. But today we're gonna talk about them with braces, what happens when you have them, what causes them, and how can you fix them. And of course you can't fix them until you know the etiology of it, right, as everything. So what caused it? Is it that you bracketed it improperly? Like maybe you, um, like in this situation, it's not the best picture, but you can see here that these are like bracketed at all a bit incisally. You know, there's not that much tooth in between the bracket and the tooth. And you know, your bracket's supposed to be in the center of the clinical crown of the tooth. So if you bracket too incisally, you know, things can be off or you bracket, you know, as opposed to bracketing more in the middle of the tooth. So you, in that case, if that's the issue, you could just move the bracket, scoot the brackets, you know, a bit gingival. But this shouldn't even be happening, of course, if you're using indirect bonding, because if you're using indirect bonding, you won't be bracketing wrong. So again, that's a whole other series of videos on indirect bonding and the why behind it and why even orthodontists use indirect bonding sometimes. Um, so that's one major issue that I see most common. The other major issue that you can get um, in terms of why you might have a posterior open bite would be an anterior interference. And that means that like maybe in this circumstance where you didn't quite calculate the Bolton discrepancy. Remember a Bolton discrepancy is a two size discrepancy. The nice thing about Invisalign is that there's a little button that calculates it. And you can look and you're like, oh, okay. Well, you know, I have mandibular access by or maxillary deficiency by 0.5 millimeters so we'd have to add a little bit of lower IPR in order to even things out so we don't have an anterior interference or we could put some veneers in 7 and 10 upper twos um, oh okay so all you got to do is even if you in braces and you don't have the ability to calculate Bolton it's pretty obvious once you close all the spaces on top and bottom um, your class one canine and you're looking at the bite and you're like huh I've got contacts on 2 to 2 or 7 through 10 well you know okay all I've got to do is add a little IPR on the bottom power chain the bottom get rid of that interference and hopefully the bottom the bite will suck down once I do that so yeah those are the two major reasons one would be anterior interference due to a Bolton discrepancy and the second one would be that you bracketed wrong so and that's easy to fix I mean, there's one third major etiology, which would be skeletal, but the skeletal should, oh, actually there's four. I'm gonna give you another one. You know, you would have seen that probably at start unless they were growing and they grew improperly. That can happen, which is why you take CEPHs and why you get numbers on CEPHs, right? Because it can predict growth in different directions. Um, so that's the benefit of that. So that that's a third one. It's very very rare, and you should have seen that at the start. But if it was a really long case, um, could happen. I mean, in that case, you're just kind of screwed. <laughs> you're gonna have to finish like that, I guess. You know, and and the patient could consider jaw surgery. But that's really rare. I don't think I've ever had that happen to me in all these 20 years. I mean, I've seen cases that started with skeletal deficiency, you know, issues, discrepancies, and I just told them they had to get jaw surgery, but I didn't try to fix them with braces, right? Um, and then say, oh, how come there's still a posterior open bite at the end? Um, last thing that might cause it would be a interference with second molars or third molars. So you can get that. Obviously, second molars, you go ahead and bracket them. Um, so again, articulating paper is your friend here. Just use your articulating paper to solve the puzzle and the mystery. I mean, um, and it should solve the problem. If you're going only anterior contacts, it's probably a Bolton, a little lower IPR, and chain the bottom. If you've got posterior contacts, uh, no anterior contacts, and a you know open bite everywhere, but on the sevens or eights, then you eights, you just pull them. <laughs> 
easy. Should close right down, right? Um, sevens, you can go ahead and bracket and intrude them for the most part. But anyways, hopefully this was helpful. So finishing, and remember like a long, long time ago, just to you know, give you guys our long, long time ago, back in our day lecture when we, before Invisalign was a thing, when we did everything in brackets and wires, and before there was Vivera retainers and really Essex retainers were more of the exception than the rule, every patient pretty much got Holly retainers. And if you got Holly retainers, then, you know, everything settled. <laughs> so assuming there wasn't a Bolton discrepancy, you didn't have interferences on the sevens and eights, um, if it was a bracketing error, everything would just settle down, you know? Um, we do maybe bonded retainers, upper and lower front teeth, do some wraparound retainers, um, and everything just settled down really, really nicely and problem was solved. So, all right, thanks so much.